Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop. This is gonna be another episode of Saturday Night Special. This will be 14. So we got another good mix of things for you this week. <clears throat> I've got some, uh, I've got some clips from my cell phone that uh, I took at work. I got a job that I did down there last weekend that I think you guys would enjoy. Just some, uh, just a few quick clips of it. And uh, I got some pictures of it too. I'll throw those up and show you. Uh, I got I got some more work in here that I'll that I'll discuss with you too. Um, this is that job for James Green that that I got to do, and it's um, I haven't started it yet because I was actually talking to James and trying to work out some details, but <clears throat> it's still sitting there. So I'm gonna be getting to this pretty soon, and then whenever I do. I'll make sure to film this because it's going to be some internal threading, metric threading. So I've got to do a gear change on the Victor and um, set this piece up here, bore it, and do some threading to where it's going to screw on here. And this is going to be his spider that he's making. Uh, I believe that he, he does uh, you know rifle machining at his shop there. And then we've got another, we got another piece to make for this end here. You know, this is his uh, chuck in, and he's wanting me to make him a uh, backing plate that'll thread on here that I can send to him, and he'll do the finished machining of it because he wants to adapt a, uh, I believe, an eight-inch chuck to it. So that that's just something that we're going to be getting to pretty soon, and uh, I know James is excited about getting to that, and uh, uh, but he's fully aware of that. Uh, this week we got another job in, and this comes to us from Tom Lipton. And this is a this is a pretty simple job that I'm going to do for him. And uh, this shaft here, he sent to me. And this is actually belongs to one of his friends. And I've got you've got a seal journal here that's got a it's got some corrosion in it. It's got some pitting, and there's a groove war in it. And they wanted me to spray weld this here. So I'm going to spray weld this one. This side here is very questionable. I think it'll polish out fine. I, I don't think that this side's going to need spray welding. So I'm going to set it up and I'll put a polish on it. And, uh, and then we'll determine then if that side needs it. But anyway, this is going to be another job pretty soon whenever I can fit it in and, and, and get to it. Just wanted to show you guys that since that was laying right here. Uh, we got some clips from my buddy Gil. He's got the vise cleaned up, painted, and he's got it mounted. And he took a couple clips on his cell phone that he sent me, and I'm gonna throw that in the video for you. Got another small project that I did this week, and uh, we'll show you that. And I might come up with something else, who knows? It's still a little bit early, but uh, I was actually able to get off work early today. <laughs> early as in uh, about six o'clock so I uh, came out here and and uh, been doing some emails and uh, started thinking about my next video so getting ready to throw some things together for you and uh, trying to think what else I had for you uh, I think I'm leaving something out but I can't remember what it is uh, oh my mom came by and paid me a visit so we're gonna we're gonna get to see her I'm gonna throw that in there and uh, and then just to kind of touch base on what I had discussed with you guys last week about uh, taking a break out here. Um, my intentions weren't that I was going to take a break from videoing, okay? The videos might slow down a little bit. I may not be as aggressive on how many I put up. <clears throat> but just know that, that doing the videos is something that I've actually really come to enjoy to do. Um, I kind of look at it almost like a hobby. So I like to make the videos and I continue, I want to continue making the videos for you because I enjoy to do that. Now, there may not be as many coming up here pretty soon, but uh, I still want to make some videos for you because I've got plenty of other things to do. What I was talking about was I'm wanting to try to slow down the workload that's coming in here, the jobs from different people that's bringing stuff to me. I'm wanting to try to slow down that because I'm working so much at my other job and I need a little bit of time to get some of my stuff done around here. And then when I've got some extra time, I want to be able to come out here, 
work on something, make a video on it, and share it on YouTube because I enjoy doing that. So that's what I had meant about uh, slowing down uh, in last week's video. So, but uh, I appreciate all the great comments and the support that I got from everybody about that, though. So, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to start working on a video here and see what I got for you. And I hope you guys enjoy, okay? Hey, everybody, this is Gil Adams, buddy. This is my uh, welding area. I told Adam I'd take a few videos um, getting my new vise installed. Um, he let me borrow his mag based drill. I got to put three holes in the bench. I'd like to mount it underneath uh, with a receiver, a socket and receiver, like uh, Tom did over at Ox Tools. Um, but I don't have the material right now, and I need to get this thing mounted. Um, I would show you the operation on this neat uh, mag based drill, but I only got two hands, so maybe Adam will include it in one of his future videos. So, let me get to work. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm over Mom, here at. Uh, Mom stopped by. <laughs> yeah, Rita uh, stopped over here at Adam's shop um, when we were over here a few weeks ago. Uh, one of the. Uh, people that was watching uh, Adam's videos, another woodworker, uh, I guess was interested in that I was a woodworker also. And then Adam called me a week or so ago and told me that uh, Tom was his name? Tom Bellis. Tom Bellis had sent me a package and I'm just now got the time to come over here and see where the package is. So mm -hmm. Adam wanted me to wait until I got over here to open it. Yep. So this is, uh, he sent me all these drills oh, wow. right here, and I actually uh, grabbed some of them and sent them to my other friend, Tom, Tom Lipton. Okay. So that was a note that he had sent right here. Okay. So it says, I have included a little something for your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's got a lot of good friends around the world. That's oh, it. and that's it. Okay, Adam, this is for your mother, the woodworker in the family. Okay, well I guess I need a knife to open it up with. Yep, here you go. Okay. Yeah, let's see. There you go. Let's we'll see what Tom sent you. I couldn't imagine what would be in this package from another woodworker. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's pretty small, isn't it? It is! It's not another little hammer, is it? Oh my gosh! Look at that. I guess another little, ha and that is tiny, tiny, tiny. Wow. That is so neat. And is that, uh, that looks, copper? That looks like copper, and it looks exactly like a claw hammer. It does. It is. It's a miniature claw hammer. <laughs> Gosh, Tom, way to go. <laughs> Hold it up there for the camera to see. That is so cute. Look at that. Oh, look how you burn on the bottom. Made it look yeah. kind of a burnt look to it all right let's see that is too cute man it looks exactly like a claw hammer it is look at the little work around mm -hmm. right it's shaped there it the is. handle is shaped just like you would find a regular claw hammer it's a little bigger at the end to you know like a so it would give you grip so there it is very cute oh i love it tom oh my <laughs> man that's gosh. awesome I'm, I'm going to have to see if I could get on my little scroll saw that I've got in my garage and see if I can make him some tiny little saw. <laughs> it won't yeah. be nothing near this, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Very cool, that Tom, great. man. Thanks thanks a bunch. That is great. I that's, love it. That's actually some really nice uh, craftsmanship right there. It that you is. Put into that. God, think, it's perfect. Uh, I think my other buddy Tom's going to be jealous of that one. <laughs> He's the hammer nut. <laughs> and I got that hammer on my keychain. Let's oh my see. Gosh. Here's Thank uh, you. there's one that James Green had made me, and it's about the same size. Man, it's it's small. Oh my goodness. Well, that was very cool. I'm glad I saved it for you to come over here. And I'm open glad it up. you did too. I couldn't imagine what would be in such a little bitty package yeah. and a little bitty piece of tissue. Yeah. And a surprisingly, a little hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. I love it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, I guess we're going to sign off. Yeah, time to eat. I just brought Adam a bunch of groceries. Yeah, we got uh, some. We got some lunch to eat. Yeah, made him a big pot of uh, chop suey with rice, some uh, filled peas, cornbread, and a lemon pound cake. Yep. Thought I'd surprise him. <laughs> anyway. I'm ready. I'm ready to go eat some. Thanks, Tom. I love it. All right. <laughs> See you guys later. Hey guys, uh, getting ready to do another little project here. This should be a pretty simple one. What I got is a little job I'm doing uh, for a buddy of mine named Cody. And he brought this template to me. And he also brought this ring here. And what it is is a little trim plate. And uh, Cody works on uh, restorations, like a classic car, muscle car restorations, and they do some really nice stuff where he works. And every now and then he's got some mods for me to do on something. So he asked me if I could fab a trim plate shaped like this that's got this bore for this ring and then this hole pattern. So what I did was uh, I kind of measured it out and put some dimensions on the uh, template here and went down to see my buddy Joe at the welding shop. And he burned one out for me out of some quarter inch aluminum. So what I got to do now is I'm going to set this in the middle, I'm going to find the center, I'm going to bore it, bore it to this size here, and we will transfer the hole pattern into, into this one here. And the, uh, as far as orientation, it's going to look about like this, with the uh, bottom of the teardrop style looking to the left. We have one hole at the top here. And this is something real simple here. There's, um, I believe there's another ring that's going to match up on the back side of the firewall. So what I'll do, once I bore this, we'll just set this on here, line the bores up, I'll clamp it, and I'll transfer it, punch those three holes, drill it, countersink it. That's what we got to do. Pretty simple job here. All right, just setting this thing up, got her clamped down snug, and we're going to find the center just using a real simple technique. The diameter of this right here is five inches, okay? So I'm gonna use my trusty stair at hook skill. And I hook it there and I can see it's five. It's it's a few thousand over, but we're not worried about that. So what I'll do is find center this way and bring it out here to the to the point here, find center that way. Using the uh, the point here, center point. And as I said, this isn't nothing. This isn't anything super critical, so what I can do is just eyeball, try to get on the full radius there. I'm trying to hold this so you guys can see it really, but we'll get it, we'll get it there. All right, two and a half, about two and a half right there. That looks about right. And you can check it this way too. Two and a half. And then I'm going to do the same thing this way. Is uh, move the table down. Alright. And I'm on two and a half that way also. So that's putting us in the center. And now I'll put the board head in there. And we'll start cutting. Just out here in the shop messing around, we had a storm coming through and it's starting to hail. We had some big ones here falling just a second ago, but you can see them bouncing off everything. We don't see hail too much. You can see them coming down now.
I hope they don't get much worse than that, man. I sure don't want to see my truck dented up. I guess I keep the camera by in case we get some more action. Oh, I got the board head set up, got the tool bit in there. So this is the head that takes a half inch tool bit and it goes through there about a 45. And this is a tool bit that I ground a while back. It's a, it's a double ended tool bit. So, you know, you can use either side. So I just stuck it in there using that side there. And I do have enough room there to adjust the, the boring head. And I've already got it touched off. It's already touching the side. So this is a two and a half inch hole, a little under two and a half, and the uh, this ring here, I measure it with my calipers, and it's measuring uh, two inches, eight hundred and forty. So anywhere from two inch, eight forty to uh, two inch, eight forty three. So we're just going to try to hit our mark somewhere in there. And he says this is it's plenty of clearance where this is sliding over, so it's not a super critical dimension there. So we'll just try to hit it right on what we're measuring this one. So I've got it touching, and so we know we've got to take about 3 8 So I'll just go ahead and dial in one full revolution, which is going to be a 50 thousandths cut. And we'll try it. See how it does. And what I like to do is uh, bring it down kind of close. Go ahead and gauge it. And let me get some cutting oil. We'll use our Tom approved spill master. All right. I'm going to slow it down to, to the uh, 3,000 feed rate to try it. A nice finish in there. Go ahead and get a quick reference. About two inch five seventy five. All right. So we got a little bit to do. So here's your uh, lock screw on the side of the head. Just lock, uh, loosen that one, and then dial in what you want. So that's 25 on the dial, but that's actually 50 thousandths off your diameter. So 25 per side. And some of these boring heads read uh, redirect. So I've got another boring head that whatever I show that it's taken on the dial is actually what it takes out in the part. But this one, you got to double it. some passes I'm getting real close to my size here and we should be around uh, 2 inch 770 all right so we got about 70 to go still try to make quick work of this do another 50 
and then we'll do a uh, finish cut. Stringing them up now. Okay, about 814. About 26, 27 thousandths. And just dial it in. We'll just dial in 27. All right. There's five, but that's 10. All right, so we're going to say tw uh, 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven. Let's see how close we are. It should put us within a thousandths. I hope. Hate stringy chips, man. Hate them. All right. I'm getting anywhere from uh, two inch eight forty, eight forty two. There's eight forty three. So I say we're good to go on that one. And I'll just. Uh, I'll just take it and do a, a quick hand scrape with the deburr tool and that'll take care of the bore. All right, holes are drilled and the vise is installed and she's a beauty too. She came out really nice. Had to make a new handle here for the little uh, tightening knob, but she works really good. I'll give it a lot of use, Adam. Thank you very much, buddy. Came out really nice. Uh, I've got uh, I've got plans for a little storage tray I'm going to build out of aluminum. I've got the material being cut right now. Maybe I'll flash a picture of that if Adam wants to show it when I'm done. Here's my um, Lincoln Precision TIG. It's really what I use it for, just small gauge aluminum and steel. It does stick welding also. I actually built my little bench, it's just 3 8 plate on top with some angle iron legs. Um, but it uh, does everything I need. And then um, I've got a little uh, box, little grizzly box pan break. See if I can open this thing up. Needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but it works out real well. So. My next project is going to be to go ahead and build a um, cylinder cart for my oxyacetylene setup because uh, I do all my cutting outside. I don't do any cutting or anything major here in the garage. So, anyways, that's it. Vice looks good. I'll get a lot of use out of it. Thanks, Adam. All right, see, so I got the ring clamped on there, and I've just gone through here and just felt it with my finger. And it feels like it's lined up within a few thousandths of being uh, centered on that bore I just did. <clears throat> so it's just got a little transfer punch. I'm just going to transfer the holes. And this is the closest one I have that fits. And I just, <clears throat> just eyeball it straight up and down the best you can. And just give it a little tap. That'll be it. And I'll go back and, and uh, lightly punch them again. All right, so I'm just going to use the old Powermatic drill press to do this 
a little bit of drilling and countersinking. And I've got this set back here, and the concrete is not really flat back here, so I'm getting a little bit of movement on the pedestal there. Just so you know, because it's going to be moving around a little bit. So I got my center point in there. And what I'm going to do is just uh, run that center point down to the punch mark. I need to actually move the table over a little bit. So that I can reach it with a C-clamp. But I'm going to pull that down. Lock the spindle. Alright, I'm going to hold it with that C-clamp. using a number five drill bit. All right, now I don't have the right screw that's going in this, but it's just a standard 82 degree countersunk hole. So I'm going to use this uh, uni flute and I'm just going to eyeball it. sample and look at it. Yep, I think that's about right right there. So we're going to leave it there. What I'm looking at is the space between the countersink and the bore here, and they're all looking about the same. <clears throat> so, we're about done with that. Actually, I'm going to leave that in there. What I'll do is come to the back side here, just hit it real quick, knock that edge off. All right, here we go. All right guys, we got it done. Just a re uh, quick recap on what we did here. There's the plate. There was the template that I went off of. There's the new plate. And the ring that I 
used to uh, get the hole size and the hole pattern there. And just got to use the uh, Powermatic drill press back there. Pretty simple job. And uh, Cody will take this thing and buff it good however he wants, but I think he said that he's going to end up powder coating this part here. So there's a quick little shorty job for you right there. guys I got something that I wanted to share with you and uh, let me say something real quick before I get into this cool red stare box here um, I got a lot of nice tools hidden away around here and uh, you know I've just I've been very fortunate with uh, you know how I was raised in our shop that I've got a lot of nice stuff and I'm always wanting to share some of that and I've shared a lot of things with you around here in some of my older videos when I've walked around and showed some stuff and I don't want people to think that I'm trying to showboat and uh, and hey look at me you know look what I got and you don't because it's not nothing like that I uh, I enjoy seeing what other people get in their videos and it's become it's become a lot of fun uh, with the with the trades and uh, and the sharing of hey look what I found at the flea market this week I really enjoy seeing that and I've got some things around here that I'm always wanting to show but I, but I kind of have this fear that I don't want people to think that I'm trying to show off because I'm not but I do want to show you some of this stuff because it's interesting so I don't know the the list of cabinet that Gil gave me I've got a couple drawers that's full of stuff now and uh, I had thought about many times going over to camera and just opening it up and showing it to you, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I am or not. I might just show you a few things, but uh, who knows? I may, I may get the bug one day to go over there and do it. But anyway, I figured I could go ahead and pick out one item and show you. And that's this, uh, that's this box right here. And it's, uh, it's another treasured item that I have. And, and uh, 
It's never been used. It's brand new. And it's only got some fading because I actually had it sitting on my desk at the old shop for a few years before I ever even moved down here and just sat there uh, because I didn't want to use it. It was too nice. I wasn't used to having brand new stuff. So let's go ahead and, and open this thing up and I'll show you what I got here. And I'll tell you the story behind it too. So I think a lot of us really love seeing the Starrett the stare stuff. I know I do. I love it. And I think what I'll do is go ahead and uh, I got my phone sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera right here so maybe you guys can see a little bit better. Let's see how that looks. Okay. So we'll open her up. Got a brand new set, you know, the, the combination square set made by Starrett. And this is brand new. It's never been used. And I've kept it in this box and haven't really touched it. I took them out and oil them one time and I've, I need to do it again because I'm, I'm noticing I've got a little bit, there's a few spots where that surface rush is trying to touch on it. But I pulled this out the other day because I haven't looked at them in quite a while. But this set here is, is a really nice set. It's the hardened steel version from Starrett. And it'll tell you hardened steel. But the, uh, you can usually tell the difference between the, the lower grade uh, cast iron and the hardened steel. So as I said, you know, you can see you got the full set here. got some fingerprints on it you know just from handling it pulling it out and then the uh, we got the uh, center finder in here too and there it is yep it's getting a little bit of rust on it so I do need to go ahead and uh, pull these things out and uh, clean them a little bit and uh, put some oil on them and then here's the scale now this isn't the kind of scale that I typically like to use, uh, but it is a nice scale. You've got your hundredths reading on one side, you got your fiftieths, thirty seconds, and sixty fourths. But the reason I haven't used this set is because I really have no need to use it. I've got plenty of old ones around here that that do the job just fine. But um, so I'll tell you how I got this. And this comes from a, uh, a friend of mine named Morgan that uh, he, he works for an industrial supplier and he had bought this for a customer and I, I don't know if the customer ordered it wrong or if, uh, if they right, sent the camera stopped for uh, quit filming there. But anyway, I was saying that uh, his customer had put his initials in this and for, for whatever reason he decided it was the wrong set. So they couldn't take them back. So what he did, he went ahead and gave them the right set and he kept these and then he brought them to me and said, hey Adam, I'd like for you to have this. Because me and, me and Morgan were always good friends. He brought me a lot of work and uh, he enjoyed coming by the shop and hanging out with me and dad. And he knew that I would like this stuff. So he, uh, he decided to give this to me and I've had it ever since. And I've, like I said, I've never used them before. So it's just a nice set of tools that I keep put up and uh, keep in the box over there so I just uh, thought I would share that with you guys and I hope you enjoyed seeing it all right Tom man this is for you buddy so a few videos back with Tom's he had showed a tool look just like this in one of his videos it's a uh, lathe tool turn attachment and he had joked around saying that uh, hey Adam's probably got three or four of these things around his shop <laughs> Well, I don't have that many, but I do have this one. And it's something that I've never messed with before. It's just been in our collection. And uh, I had thrown it in a box whenever I was moving our shop and and whenever I seen Tom, so you know, it reminded me of it. So I thought I would share it. So I believe this is uh, one or two sizes larger 
than the one that Tom's got. This is a number three Morse taper, and these holes are one inch, and I believe Tom said his was five eighths. So there may be an in-between size. Now, the thing's in, in, it's in good condition, but it's got a lot of surface rust on it, and I think it's sat its whole life. Um, the locking mechanism here was kind of froze up, but I've got it to work loose. I can move it now, but uh, I haven't been able to turn it, but I haven't even set it in the lathe to try to get it to spin. But I believe that this thing has never been used. It looks like it still has dried up cosmoline in it right here. Down in some of these holes, I can still see cosmoline down in there. In several of the holes, I can still see what looks like might be cosmoline. It's got that feel, you know. But pretty neat tool. I don't know if I'll ever use it or not, but it would be, it would be nice to uh, go ahead and take it apart and clean it up real good, give it a nice polish and oil and put it back together. Uh, this is an Enco. I believe Tom's was an Enco. It says Enco Manufacturing Company, Chicago, Illinois, USA, and it's got a serial number, but I can't find a size on it anywhere. I think Tom said that his, his has a size stamped on it, a model number or something like that, but I don't see one on this, and it may be on here somewhere. After it's cleaned up, I might be able to find one, but anyway, I thought that was pretty cool, and he, he kind of got a chuckle out of me whenever he had pulled that out and showed it. So I had this sitting over on the bench, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So so there you go. There's a, there's a nice old NOS uh, turn attachment. Okay.